Hi guys, um, I'm going to walk you through our box drawing assignment. Um, this is going to be a little bit different than I would be doing if we were in the classroom. You guys are going to be drawing a tissue box because I figure that you all have one at home. So I've written some of the directions here into OneNote. So I'm going to go through this step by step and I'm going to be drawing digitally. Uh, but you guys will be drawing in your sketchbooks. All right, the first thing I want you to do is uh, to set up your still life. So you need to find a tissue box and you need to place it so that the light is coming from the left or the right, not behind the box and not in front of the box. So in my photo here, uh, this may be a little bit misleading because I do have a window behind my desk and behind the box, but if you'll notice, it's actually kind of late in the evening and I have um, some light coming, some artificial light coming from the right side of my box. I've got a lamp over there. And so that's really the main light source. Um, if I were going to use the daylight as my main light source, I would have to rearrange my whole seat so that I were on the other side of my desk. And that way I would have um, the daylight coming in to the side of my box rather than behind it. Okay, so um, once you have it set up, um, then you're going to need to place your sketchbook. Um, and I would recommend turning your sketchbook so that it is landscape style rather than portrait style because that's going to give you more room to draw your box, which is long rather than tall. All right, now the next thing I would like you guys to do is to take a photo. So it looks like I left that off my directions here, but I will put that into my directions for you guys. Um, so you can see that I took a photo of the box using my tablet, and then I actually put that photo into paint.net. So if you don't know where paint.net is on your computer, you can search it down here in the search box, search bar. And then um, make sure that you've opened up paint.net. You also have a computer program called just paint, but this is paint.net. Um, so first I put it in like so. It might ask you if you want to expand your canvas. So let me show you how that would work. I would go to file. I would say I want a new document. Um, this already actually has this pre-selected. Um, so I'm going to maybe just close this so that it doesn't have that. All right, and I've saved this. I'm going to save it again. Okay, so now I would actually go to paint.net. So you see paint.net. There's also paint, but I want paint.net. I'm going to open it. All right, so this is what it's gonna look like. You might need to select this tool. And I've already copied the photo that I wanted. So I was over here in camera and I just hit copy. And then I went to paint.net and I'm going to use control V to paste. And it's gonna ask me if I want to expand the canvas and I'm gonna say yes. So there's my photo. And then I would go ahead and save this and make sure that when I'm saving it, I have it to a folder that makes sense. So for myself, rather than just save things to my pictures folder on my computer, I generally save pictures on the cloud, so I'm in OneDrive, and my art, and I've created a folder already called Tissue Box Drawing. And you guys would wanna save this in your folder, which you've called My Art, or whatever you called it on the cloud, on uh, OneDrive. Okay, so Tissue Box Drawing, I'm gonna open that up. And I'll just call this tissue, 
tissue box two in color. Okay, I'm gonna save that. All right, and then I'll hit okay. And I also wanna make sure um, that I have made this into black and white. So this is just going to make your life a little bit easier. So if we were doing these in class, we might not do so much with photography, but since you guys are at home, I wanna um, help you in every way that I can and doing some of these things on um, our photos and on our tablet can help a lot with understanding how to draw them a little bit more easily. So I'm going to go to image. Oops, no, I'm not. I'm going to go to adjustments and I'm going to go down one to black and white. And it's going to make this into black and white. And if I wanted to, I could do some other things and up the brightness and contrast. So maybe I'll do that just to make this a little bit easier. I could do the brightness too if I wanted, make the whole thing a little brighter. All right. So if you want to play with the brightness and contrast, you can also do that. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to save this. I just realized I saved it as number two in color, but oh well, it's now black and white. <laughs> so um, I can also then go up to edit. And for myself, I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to put it in this same OneNote page that I'm looking at. So I'm just going to go ahead and add this down here. I'm going to copy it and paste it. All right, so now I'm looking at this. All right, and now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to start to draw. So for you guys, you would be drawing on your sketchbook on a clean page in landscape format. So that's gonna kind of match the long and short shape of your box. But I'm gonna draw digitally so I can record this a little bit more easily for you guys. So you're just gonna to have to imagine that my, um, that what I'm doing here is a little bit more in a landscape format. So I think what I'm gonna do is draw out what my page would look like here and we'll see how well this works. All right, so I'm using a straight edge, which I don't think you guys can see, but I am using a ruler to try to get this a little bit straighter. And I'm just holding that right up to the screen. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and also use that straight edge at the sides. Now you guys won't have to do this because you're just gonna use your sketchbook page. Okay, but now I've got that. Okay, um, and I can zoom in and zoom out of that if I need to. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with the underdrawing, which is gonna be pretty light. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna switch this to red so you know when I am using red that that is going to signify that it's an underdrawing for me. And I'm keeping it this kind of light um, pen in Mischief, which is my drawing app. And so this is the lighter one, and I can also make it skinnier if I wanted to, but I think I'll keep it how it is for now. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is get the basic proportions of my box. So this is gonna seem a little odd, but I'm going to draw my underdrawing as ovals rather than um, as straight lines and um, more geometric shapes. So think about this as when you're doing one of those animal drawings and you started out with ovals instead of really detailed shapes. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, let's say this is about the shape of my box, shape and size of my box. And I'm gonna make that the shape and size of this part here, this front plane. I don't know if you guys can see here, I'll use my cursor, this front plane. All right, so that means I'm also then going to need 
to um, figure out the underdrawing for the top plane of my box. So I can use my cursor here to measure. So my cursor goes one, about two times into this top plane of my box. One, two, and a little more, maybe two and a half. All right, and then it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, seven and a half, let's say. All right, so that gives me the idea of about how big this top plane is compared to the bottom plane. So if this was like seven and a half and this was like two and a half, if my math is correct, this should go into here a little bit more than two times. All right, so this is, all of that is to say that maybe the top of my box is about that big, where the front plane of my box is maybe that big, something like that. All right, so um, you're going to be wanting to follow along at home and you're gonna wanna draw a couple of ovals. All right, so um, draw one that represents this front plane and one that represents this top plane. And if you are also using a tissue box and you also have it turned the same direction I do, then yours should look a lot like mine. All right, because tissue boxes tend to be about the same dimensions. All right, so next thing I'm going to do is um, now start to use this underdrawing as a guideline for how I want the actual lines to look. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say, okay, this front plane of my box looks like a rectangle, all right? So I want these sides to be pretty straight up and down. Now I will say, you may be looking at this and going, wait a minute, these are not completely vertical. That is true, because I'm using a camera and because of the angle of my camera, this is actually um, making these look a little bit as if they're going at a diagonal. Um, if I were not using a camera and I would just were using my eye, however, these would really look vertical and in line with the side planes of my photograph. Um, so since we are using a photograph, I suppose you can do it just how you see it in the photograph. Um, or I'm also hoping that at home, you're also looking at your actual tissue box. So you may choose to do them straight up and down. Um, but please be aware of the choices that you're making. I'm gonna make mine straight up and down. All right, so now if I want to, I can actually use a straight edge. So I think I might do that a little bit. Although we're still at a, pl a point where this could still be adjusted. So actually over here, I'm not gonna use my straight edge. All right, but I am going to do vertical lines to the best of my ability. I'm going to do a horizontal line and I'm gonna do another horizontal line. All right, so now comes the tricky part. Um, for this top plane of the box, what people want to do is make these lines go straight up because they know that this top plane of the box is going back in space. And their brain tells them that these lines should then go straight up, straight up equals straight back in space. But if you look at this photo, you see that actually those lines that are going straight back in space are at a diagonal and those would converge at um, a vanishing point that might be somewhere up here, let's say. All right, so this should be kind of a familiar idea from the earlier video you watched about one point perspective. And the vanishing point is right here somewhere in the middle and above the box. If the vanishing point were off to the side, then this angle here would go that way and this angle here would also go that way, but at a slightly steeper angle to over here. But no, our vanishing point is right back here because we have the tissue box right in front of us. Okay, so the point is I wanna draw these lines at an angle, okay? So I'm gonna draw them somewhat like this instead. Now, to figure out what the angle should be, you have a few things that you can do. You could hold your pencil straight up and down or tilt it to the side and try to mimic this angle. 
but I actually like to hold it straight up and down here. So here I'm gonna draw my pencil. Let's say this were my pencil. And then imagine, so I would be holding my pencil over here, but in front of the real tissue box and closing one eye so that I'm taking out um, parallax vision. So if I only have one eye, then my eyes are functioning more like a camera because a camera has one lens. It's two eyes that give you two different views and then give you depth perception. But if you close one eye, it's um, more like a camera and you can see how it would look to a camera. So I would hold my pencil up here, kind of in line with this vertical edge. And then I would imagine, um, I would really look at what this sort of triangle in the negative space looks like. So over here would be my triangle. And I would say, okay, is this the line of my triangle? Nah, not quite. The line of my triangle might be more like that. All right. And then I'm going to do the same process over here. So I'm going to imagine a straight line here, maybe hold my pencil up that way and look at what is this triangle in the negative space. So here's my straight up and down. You can imagine that as a pencil. You guys don't have to draw a pencil here, but I would hold up the pencil in front of the box. All right, so I'm imagining this straight up and down pencil, or I'm looking at it, and then I'm thinking, okay, what triangle is that? So I'm gonna try to draw that triangle. Maybe it's something like this, all right? And then I'm gonna connect this side to this side with a straight line. All right, and now I'm going to switch to my eraser and I'm going to erase this triangle that I've created except for this one line right here and this one line right here. All right, and if the box is truly right smack dab in the center, then this one and this one will look exactly the same and those angles will um, be mirror images of each other. So they're not the same angle, but they're mirror images. So, um, okay, I can't remember what that would be on, on, um, on the protractor, but <laughs> they're mirror images. One would be under 100 and one would be 100 and something, and they would be the mirror image of one another. Okay. All right, so now um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw this line of the table. So notice how this line of the table is going to be about horizontal if you've set up your tissue box the way I have. If you set up your tissue box so it um, was at an angle to the table, then it would be different. But I've set it up so that my tissue box here is parallel to me. So this is a horizontal line and it's also parallel with the front and back edge of the table. So now I've got a horizontal line back here. And I'm going to notice where does this line visually touch the tissue box? All right. So is it somewhere up here? For me, it's not in this top plane. For me, it's in this front plane, all right? And maybe yours is somewhere back here. Maybe it's way, way up here somewhere. But for me, it's right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw that. Oops, I'm gonna need to go back to the pen to do that. All right, and I could even just draw a straight line all the way through. And then I would use my eraser tool to get rid of the part that is behind the box. All right. Um, okay, and so now I have a lot of that basic drawing down. At this point, um, I could definitely use my straight edge if I haven't already. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna kind of redefine this. If you are using a ruler, you're gonna wanna make sure that you hold it up to the bottom of your page and compare and to the top of your page and compare, and to the side of your page and compare as you're trying to make these edges absolutely vertical and absolutely horizontal. And at this point, I can also be changing to a black digital drawing tool because these lines are no longer gonna be my underdrawing. These lines are gonna to start to be my actual real lines that are going to appear in my real drawing. I'm still going to keep them fairly light. So notice I didn't switch them to being a darker 
pen tool or a thicker pen tool because I'm still going to be making mistakes. I'm still going to be making changes and I want to be able to keep them light enough that I can still make those changes. So you can see this isn't even quite perfect. Oops. All right, so bear with me as I try to do this digitally. That's not, I'm not a digital drawing native. I'm definitely a pencil and paper drawing native, so bear with me. All right, I'm going to just switch to doing this freehand, which is a little more comfortable for me, but I may not get as sharp edges. All right, and I'm gonna also make this sharper. Imagine I were using the straight edge and it were a little bit sharper. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to erase. All right, and so I'm erasing a lot of this underdrawing that I don't need anymore. All right, now before I'm gonna call this finished, I am gonna go ahead and I'm going to add um, this opening in the box. Ooh, where's my cursor? Come on, cursor. Cursor. There we go. Um, there's my opening in the box and the tissue. So I have the tissue in such a way that I can only see this side, but I can kind of imagine, again, my box is almost completely symmetrical here, the way I've set it up. So this side of the box is gonna be the mirror image of this side of the box in terms of the opening. So notice how this diagonal here is perfectly parallel to this diagonal here. So that's where I'm gonna start. And I'm just eyeballing how far that is from the edge of the box. And I'm eyeballing how far it is from the front edge of the box. So here it's gonna be pretty much horizontal. And over here, it's gonna be about the same distance away from the edge. And then I'm also going to be eyeballing how far is it from the back. Notice, even though it would be symmetrical um, and just right in the center of the top of the box, visually, this bottom edge, this edge, is closer to us. So it's really, it's the front edge. It's not truly the bottom edge, but um, in our line of vision it is. And that is closer to us, and so that appears bigger. And this one back here appears smaller, but it's just because this side is closer to us. So as I'm drawing that in, I wanna make sure this back edge is a little skinnier. So something like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna draw this tissue in and I'm gonna draw it how I see it. So I can kind of say, okay, I think it starts about here. And okay, I see kind of an angle and then like another angle and then maybe another and it gets flat and it goes down. Now it's kind of curving, but I'm gonna make it a little bit more angular and I'll talk about why. Um, now one thing I didn't do, I didn't kind of create an overall shape and a lot of times that is the best thing and the best way to go. So notice how this has kind of gotten a little bit off in terms of the size and shape. So I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna redo this in red as an underdrawing. And I'm gonna say, okay, how tall is this? Um, and where does this fall? Does this part over here, okay, that falls a little bit this to the side of center. Maybe that'll be here, and maybe this will be my shape, and maybe this part will be down here. And see how I'm making this a little bit rougher. I'm kind of doing an underdrawing first. All right, and then, I'm gonna erase some of that first drawing I did. So see how I'm making mistakes and then I'm erasing them. And this second time around, I've kind of given myself a little bit more of an underdrawing to help me to make sure that this is about the right size. So now I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna try this again. And notice how I'm using kind of angles instead of curves. And that is because um, most things that our eye perceives, most edges or lines that our eye perceives as curves are made out of angles. And, um, but we may not notice that and our eye kind of generalizes them and reads them as curves. So um, 
we're kind of breaking them down. And that helps us then see those curves more accurately. Even if they truly are curves, it'll help us get the proportions of those curves correct. Um, and then notice too, this front plane of this tissue is going like so. And the line kind of adjusts just a little bit here where it's draping over the edge there. All right, so there we go. All right, and now we've got the basic tissue box. I'm going to go back a little bit. I'm also going to add this shadow in over here. So with the shadow, make sure that again, I'm going to see where does this shadow start? Where does this, this line, this back line of the shadow line up with the edge of the front plane? It's going to be not quite halfway down. It's also, it's not quite at a perfect horizontal. It's kind of angling a little bit and then angling and then angling like this. So again, if I were to draw an underdrawing of that first, I might have said, okay, my underdrawing, the shadow is going to be something like this. And then I could draw over top of that. Now notice here, one thing that sometimes throws people off is they'll go, well, is the shadow here? or is it here? See how there are two shadows? And the answer is it's not there or there, it's both. There are kind of two light sources. I actually have two lamps over here rather than one. So don't be afraid. The message, the theme is draw what you see. And if you see, and if you think you see it, chances are you probably do, even if you're not sure why it looks that way and it seems a little odd. I can also say, hey, you know what? Look at this. There's a little bit of a shadow here. Maybe that's from the window. Doesn't really matter why. I could try to figure it out. It might be that one lamp is a little farther behind than the other, but the important thing is that I draw it. Okay, and I'm gonna pretty much stop there. If you want to, whoops. If you want to draw a little bit of the background as well, you can, um, but that's all you really have to do. So um, I think I'm gonna leave it like that So because we're all gonna have different backgrounds and if you wanna draw yours, fine, but I'm gonna do mine um, just with shading instead so that it's a little bit less cluttered and it's a little bit clearer for you guys and that's what we typically do in school. I'm going to leave this just so, how it is for now, and that's going to be the end of today's lesson. So next time we have a class, um, we will add some shading to that. All right. Happy art making, guys.